Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in Run. This is Robbie with Believe in Run. What are we holding? Today we are talking about the Topo Athletic Spectre 2. Dude, I'll tell you what's like the first thing I noticed about this shoe. Uh -huh. It's this egregious heel. The, yeah. That's a lot of heel. It's a, it is a lot there. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna deny that. Baby I, got back. She does, she do. My anaconda wants some. I'm gonna <laughs> step away. <laughs> I don't know if I want, I don't know if I want to be near such the a- anaconda? Rep, that reptile. All right. This shoe, if you're familiar with Topo, it might look a little bit familiar to a shoe we saw last year, which was a Topo Athletic Cyclone 2. And honestly, it, this is basically a max. What? version of that shoe. A max, wow, that means it's got more cushioning. Maxed up, built up. All right, so the Cyclone, you really liked. I did, yeah, I thought that was one of the more underrated slash like sleeper hits of 2023. Just a very smooth, light, very lightweight, uh, kind of tempo shoe. Would you compare it to like the Hoka Cielo Road? Yeah, I mean, it's in that use range, I would say. Not, All right. Not exactly Efficient runner, lightweight, Good yeah. turnover, p backs midsole. Yep, uh, and so this is basically just more of that. But for those who don't know, you may notice Topo Athletic is that natural foot shape style, kind of that thing that Ultra started way back when, and then kind of like went away from Topo still staying in that lane. Topo seems to have done really well with this and I'm actually surprised that they're not more popular for it. They've got that foot shape, but then they're a little more flexible on the drop. So you see stuff like five millimeter drops, zero drops. They kind of cover a yeah. little more ground with that. Can you explain what this drop is? Yeah, so this is a five millimeter drop as well. This is 37 in the heel, 32 in the forefoot. And like you said, Topo has done a really nice job of capturing some of those ultra fans who might be done with the zero drop life. Maybe their Achilles got blown out. Maybe, maybe they have lifelong calf injuries. And um, now Altra is trying to do drop shoes. Yes, yeah, so. so now Altra and their experience line, they're moving to like four millimeter drops. So they, they see the writing on the wall. They know what's up. I, in my written review, I compared Altra to like, they were kind of like test the Tesla of running in the 2010s. Like this is the future. This is going to be everything. Like this is going to solve all your problems. And then <laughs> and then Topo's like the Toyota, where they're bridging that gap, hedging their bets, where Toyota's like, oh, we're gonna go a little bit electric, a little bit hybrid here. Tesla's had its ups and downs, whereas well, Toyota's kind of like just been like crushing that hybrid market. I think the difference is that you had to convince people to go zero drop. You had to convince people that that was a, a, a feature that they would want. Mm -hmm. Where Topo's like, okay, people do want a foot shape shoe, clearly. And yeah, there's a, sure. They, there's a market for that. I'm probably not the person for that, but the uh, idea of making the foot shape shoe in a more traditional drop and feel and, and, and like geometry makes sense. Mm -hmm. But before we go off on philosophy, why don't you walk us through the upper <laughs> All right. and get, give us a rundown. Yeah, so this is a pretty standard engineered mesh upper from Topo. We've seen, this style of upper in Topo shoes before. I will say, I feel like their uppers are always such like a really nice fit. R wraps the foot well. You get a good lockdown, especially in the midfoot and the heel. I feel to Topo always does a great job. Yeah, the job padding in the collar and the heel counter look nice. And it's a pretty standard laces and everything else. So, and of course the wider toe box. So I think the lockdown, no issues at all throughout. Um, and you get that more you know, more room in the toe box for more natural foot splay. Moving on to the midsole, yeah, we have that p backs midsole. Now we're talking- Branded p backs Branded p backs the real deal, not p actual p backs uh, It's that popcorn style p backs As you would imagine, feels great. I really like the- Lightweight, bouncy, yeah. energy return, the works. Yeah, everything. This The thing is, is like, this is a pretty simple shoe. You got your upper, you got your P-Vax midsole, you got some rubber on the outsole, that's it. This is one of those things that makes me like pull out my hair with some shoe manufacturers because it's not that hard. <laughs> it, it, it really, really isn't. isn't that hard. Good foam, nice fitting upper, 
and you're pretty much done. Yeah. And they try to make it hard. They try to throw in all this extra stuff. I, I'm looking at you, say, Under Armour. I'm looking at you. Like, this, it, just to do this is simple. Yeah, it's, it's not rocket geometry. And the end result here is that you get a nice cushion ride, but it's super smooth. You got a flexible midsole right here. It just kind of rolls through the stride. Obviously, you can see there's a little bit of a rocker here to it. it. Gives you enough comfort for long runs. It's light enough to do speed work in. It's just a really nice shoe. I, I can know. tell you've put a lot of work on this shoe just from the uh, wear and tear on it. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like the P-backs held up or did you start to feel like it deadened? Like, oh, what's the lifespan on I mean, this I think I put in, I, so I put in around, I think 30 miles in this shoe. So I, that's enough, you know, that's not enough to really say over the long term whether it's gonna hold up, but it, I mean, it's P-backs, it's gonna do well. I, the only caveat I would say is that, look, there's a lot of exposed foam underneath here. Yeah. I do feel like the the pellet form of P-backs mm -hmm. has a longer lifespan than, say, just your foam block, like when you get mm -hmm. it in the, like, Vaporfly or something like that. Those are the ones that seem to compress and, and lose a little bit of the magic. Yeah. The pellet seems to be a little more durable. I took this on a couple roads and I did like a rail trail for my long run, so it didn't get chewed up too much, but there is a little bit, you can see, it's there's a little bit of abrasion there. So I wouldn't take it on anything too rocky or aggressive, not that you would, but it has a wider forefoot, a bit of a wide, wider, uh, you know, platform through the midfoot and the heel. So there's a decent amount of stability despite that higher stack of P-backs. So no issues there at all as well. You're getting a nice landing. The weight on the shoe is for a men's nine, 8.1 ounces, 230 grams. That's a pretty light shoe, especially if we're talking like daily trainer range. I mean, for if you had a 10 and a half, it's gonna be what, 8.6 ounces, pretty decent. Yep. This thing disappears on the foot. You don't feel it when you're running. So the price on this price point in the shoe is actually pretty good. It's 165. I mean, there's not too many full P back shoes that are in yeah. that range for that price. Yeah, it's a, it's honestly it's a really good value. So I think a lot of people are gonna really like that, especially maybe people who are coming from Ultra and are like, man, I just want that really nice feel that you get from that. Uh, p backs midsole that you just cannot get in an ultra shoe, but you still want to keep a lower drop and a natural foot shape. I mean, this is perfect. Uh, comparisons to this shoe, I would say, I mean, just looking at it, especially the midsole, you might think Sockety Endorphin Speed 4. I think there's a little bit of similarity to that. I don't think it's quite as soft, but it there is definitely a relational feel between those two types of shoes. Um, it's a, it's not a firm shoe. It's definitely, it's a little bit on the softer side, but bouncy. I would say it's just a nice ride overall. So Robbie, I can take a guess at where you're gonna go with this shoe. Yeah, this is a green, no question. I think this is the best Topo shoe that they've put out. I feel like Topo's Ever. always put out some solid shoes, not the greatest, but like really reliable, enjoyable shoes, especially on the trail side, they absolutely crush it. And I think this is their best shoe to date. I think it's the, if you like the Cyclone, especially last year, you're really gonna love this one for your training. And yeah, well done. All right, Robbie, thanks for this review. I guess we could tell people what we'd like them to do. Yeah, make sure you subscribe to our channel, like this video if you liked it or if you didn't. And make sure you follow us on all our other channels, Instagram, our podcast, The Drop, Fuel for the Soul, sign up for our weekly email list. And yeah, just be wherever we are. Yeah, and check out believeintherun.com for more reviews. Of course. All right. Oh yeah, but last thing, our big guy, Chad, also reviewed this shoe. So for, for all you bigger runners out there, check out the written review on the website. Uh, I'm sure this is gonna go up on his best shoes of 2024 list. So yeah, check that out. Thank you.